Vince Gilligan particularly likes. Actually, if you want to talk about the one that Vince Gilligan particularly likes, he actually likes, uh, he's uh, for uh, Whistle Pig. Whistle Pig? Yeah, and they actually uh, use that in one of the episodes of Breaking Bad. The uh, One of the lieutenant captains has that with Hank in an episode. He breaks out the Whistle Pig, and that one's a single malt scotch, and I can't remember how long that one's aged. But that one, you can find it, but usually you have to order it, and that one's pretty expensive. It's like 70, 80 bucks. For, for a bottle. The Whistle Pig. Whistle Pig. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very interesting name. But that's not the one that we have here today. No. We do have a uh, we do have a scotch. It's a blended scotch, which is a little bit uh, newer to us. We've done a lot of single malt type things. But uh, this does have the uh, Breaking Bad tie-in, so... It's the same amount of syllables as Whistle Pig. Wow. That was... Did you just think of that right now? Just as we were going Off the along, cuff. yeah. There you go. There we go. <laughs> this is where the mind wanders to at the end of a <laughs> long podcasting day. Yes. So we've got some scotch for this Give It a Shot. I'm Andrew. And I'm Keith. And we are about beverages.com. And the beverage we're about today is the Dimple Pinch from uh, Hague Distillery. Yes. In Scotland. Uh, as Andrew said, it's blended uh, age and age 15 years. Normally, yeah, we go for the single malts. Um, yeah, that's just mostly what we've had. We have tried some other. Uh, Non-single malts. We've had some other blended things. Remember when we did that tasting at Total Wine where it That's was correct. scotch? Yeah, we have. Uh, we had a couple some. of those. So we have had some other like blends in the back. And obviously, you can see this bottle is a little short. So I've had this for a little while. It was, uh, <laughs> short as far as content. Short as far as content. <laughs> right. that it has been uh, already uh, ha- consumed uh, somewhat. Uh, actually, this was given to me as a gift. My brother Joe gave this to me uh, for my birthday. We're both... Uh, he turned me into a very huge Breaking Bad fan. Like, right at the end of the run, I was able to catch up <laughs> on all the episodes with about, like, three months to go. They they finally, uh, he and uh, his wife Leslie encouraged me enough. I watched all of them. Thank you to Netflix <laughs> and, their, and their streaming service. And, yeah, caught up, got to watch the last few episodes with them. So we kind of, we shared a moment. And so, so. what season is the, does the Dimple Pinch make its appearance? They actually use this in about... Th- Three, see, this is probably where Joe's screaming at his uh, podcast, right? Oh, okay. Because he knows probably exactly. But no, I think it was about three different times they used that specifically in the penultimate, in the second to last episode. Oh, okay. He has some of this. And uh, and I wonder what, we were, we were discussing this a little bit before, what significance, why this one? You know, I don't know. You know or is, is it's probably there? a lot of this. random. Who yeah, knows? It, well, and a lot of times it can just be like, oh, the writer likes that. You know right. what I mean? Like, you know, like, so like they did use the whistle pig that one time, and that's a, a Vince Gilligan favorite from what I've read. Uh, and yeah, this one made it, I think this one was used in the first season uh, toward the end when certain things happen. I don't want to get into <laughs> you know, into that. And then it was used again in the fifth season and then, like I said, at the, at the very end of the... So for some reason, when he reaches for a scotch, he reaches for a blended. And maybe because that's what he feels is all his lives are crashing around him or something like that. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. Wow. There could be symbolism there. Sure, I'll why not? I, that's what we'll go with. Cool. I sure like it. Okay. All right. Until uh, Vince Gilligan gets a hold of us and lets us know. <laughs> that's right. Uh, anywhere from 35 to $40, you can find this. Kay. Like I said, most, most places do carry this one uh, total wine. Uh, you know, BevMo, all those all those kinds of things, they do have this. And uh, it is known kind of for, and I think this is, they never actually mention it by name, but everyone knows that it's this scotch just because of the shape of the bottle. It's this very interesting, unique, triangular-shaped bottle that was uh, we were just reading about was actually patented in the U.S., one yeah. of the first kind of glassware things to be patented that way. So now, is this the only scotch? This can't be the only one that this uh, distillery does, is it? I, I Yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't think so, but I honestly okay. don't know. All right. That name a uh, Hague sounds familiar though, like I've heard that before. So, but I, okay. I I cannot say. Okay. No, I cannot say. Don't say. That's right. Don't even try. All right. So we'll just uh, go ahead and get into this. We we have we have turned into quite the uh, lovers of Scotch over the years, thanks to Fitz. Fit, yeah. Who, uh, like I said, we did a couple. Uh, those were back when we did the long form podcasts. A couple of those, and man, how much did he? Uh, that was probably a. That What's was that? probably a. <laughs> <laughs> you like what I did there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey. that, that was. Uh, gosh, we did like ten scotches ten. at that time. Yeah. Turned into two parts. That thing. That thing yeah. was huge. And then throughout the years, we've just done more and more. And actually, speaking of some of the one of the bourbons that he'd given us too a while back, I bought a bottle of the Blands. Oh, yeah. Man, I love the Blands. Yeah, he That's he so also good. gave us some some bourbons to try too. Yeah. So. He was he was a good source for Do us. You see there for uh, I don't. He works over on the other side of town. So, oh, okay. Um, so no, I have have not seen him in a oh, while. Oh, it's too bad. I, I'm I'm sure our paths will cross again soon. So I hope so. Yep. 
usual nice kind of honey gold color there, just yeah. nice and look at the just swirling that around a little bit. You get the nice little clinging to the side, the little legs clinging inside of the glass there. So, does the true like Scotch aficionado appreciate the blends as well as the single malts, or do they sort of? I mean, do they poo-poo? Yeah. I don't, you know, it's another thing I honestly don't know the answer and to. I, that. I don't know if it's just, I don't know if they if they would say no, whatever it, it's in the taste, and you can tell. You know, who knows? I'm I'm just curious. It's interesting because the you know, how they are regarded by. What's the one that we really like? The uh, the Jura, the superstition. That's actually kind of. It's like a single malt, but they blend barrels to get. You know what I mean? It's not like oh, a true okay. single. Okay. Like I just mentioned the Blantons, which I know is not Scotch; it's bourbon. But that one specifically is barreled. Like okay. That is from this one barrel. One barrel. There's nothing okay. blended because it even on the on the because they don't even actually put a year uh, distinction on there because it doesn't matter how long it's been aged. It's like once, you know, the head spirit. I don't know what what are they what are they master distiller. Thank you, master distiller. Once he actually gets it, oh, that's the flavor. They're done. I don't okay. care if it's been six years, ten years, whatever. Like it says, once that barrel, he it's feels ready. it has extracted what it has needed to out of it, then they kind of do that. So I honestly don't know. Cool. I'm surprised though for a blended though. This I mean, this one's 15 years, mm -hmm. so that's a pretty you know, like yeah. so that's a pretty long time. From when I see other blended things that you know, right? Maybe in my own mind, I kind of eh, I'm not gonna go for that. Right. So. I get a little a little bit of brine in there. Yeah, a little. What do we always like to say? The sea spray? The little sea spray. Some sweet, though. Some sweet, and then the peat's in there, for sure. It's not yeah, as strong as in yeah, some that we have. Yeah, it's not smoky peaty, almost. Though. No. It's most, mo more like just peat, like earth. Yeah, actually, that's as a good way to, to put that. the yeah, smoky peaty. Yeah, it's not like the smoky... Like, people usually sometimes associate peat with immediately it's bacon, or it's that heavy, like, kind of thing. Right. Whereas, yeah, this is more of like, it's almost... Yeah, like it's from the earth. Maybe we haven't quite set fire to it yet. Right. <laughs> it hasn't been cooked. Right. There's a little bit more. Yeah, that's a great way to describe that. Yeah. It is a little bit more on the earthier side. I I love that aroma. That's just a nice. I really like that. Yeah. It's it's co it's complex. It draws from I think both of the uh styles actually. Of, yeah. Or of scotch. Would you say it blends them together? It b does blend them together. I yes. see. At least in the nose. A little, you get, is there a sweet? I get like a honey sort of note yeah, underneath actually, there. Yeah, no, very okay. much so. All right. Yeah, I, I definitely think the honey's there. And actually, for people not seeing the video and just watching the podcast, we are <clears> drinking this neat. Okay. Uh, we're not, you know, like I said, just kind of room temperature. I know a lot of people sometimes will use a, a quote-unquote whiskey stone, you know, where you can actually have those cold and then you don't, you know, water anything down. Or some people throw ice or a little splash of water, but... Again, referring back to Fitz, why would I want to thin out my flavors? <laughs> we, yeah, we, yeah. We, we like him this way. So, This is the way he wanted us to drink it. This is the way I want to drink it. But yeah, no, I definitely agree. Like I said, I think there's a nice honey flavor in there. Right. Um, the peat comes through really nice and balanced. It's, it's, it's definitely on the stronger side of peatier things. We've had... You know, scotches that are less peaty. Oh, yeah. You know, like the Scapa or but things like that. But definitely not that smoky peaty. Yeah, and I think it's, that's it's such a great observation. Like I said, I'd never sort of I've never been peat. having this, and I'd never even thought about why this one was different. Like, I knew, I mean, I, I like the peatier ones, too. Like, mm -hmm. I, I like everything. Oh, I yeah. like all of those, you know, kinds of flavors. Yeah. It just depends on the mood. You know, but this one, I'd never quite knew why it was different in that way. But that's, no, that's a great way of putting it. It is more toward, like, an earthiness as opposed to being the heavy smoked Right. Almost mesquite. Like you can almost get that kind of thing going in there with that peaty, salty. There's almost a little cinnamon in there too. Just nice sort of stuff. lingering right there at the end. Cause part, and that might just be the, sort of that sweet fire that I'm tasting. Yeah. But uh, There's almost like a couple levels of sweet. Like there's the honey sweet. Mm -hmm. There's almost like, like you said, cinnamon, like almost cinnamon and sugar sweet where you get a different kind of sweet and then it goes into that spiciness. Yeah. I get that in there too. Yeah, because the honey sweet is more on the taste while it's in your mouth, and the cinnamon sort of sweet is more what I'm getting right now in the in the afterglow. In the finish. In the finish. Yes. Like the platters. Here in the afterglow. Oh, of love day. day. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I like that. We keep our running. I was okay, wondering what song you were going with there. <laughs> okay. Twilight time, I think. Right? Isn't that what that's called? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I. That's one of the. Uh, even though we'd had other ones, that was one of the first blended. I was like, "Wow, that's a really good blended scotch." Yeah, that's yeah, quite uh, quite good. So now we know why, if you're on the run or there's bad things going for you, <laughs> why someone like Walter White would probably choose this scotch. You'd think maybe you know at that point that you know he he might 
pick like an even he might like even go up a few levels from that yeah what the but, heck I'm a, but at the at the place he was at where he happened to be at that time that probably was the best thing they had and okay. it's and it's lucky that they had something this nice yeah if you've seen the bar at the end of <laughs> if you've seen the bar at the end of breaking bad that he's in i'm kind of surprised they had even something this good which i think most people have except for me so <laughs> I, I, I know i'm in the vast minority there so someday but, uh, maybe someday maybe but on my deathbed <laughs> well, finally, <laughs> hey, you told me that Marty Robbins El Paso was used in it, so I'm I'm good with that. The very last episode they used yeah. it. Oh my gosh, you, he puts it in the cassette player. It's the only cassette that's in this car, and even the last one is called. Isn't it called Felina? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that. Alone, that's all right? I need to know right there. I'm I'm good. <laughs> you, you can say without ever having watched it. The show went out the, the right way. The, yeah, it did. It finished the right Absolutely. way. Absolutely. <laughs> used El Paso uh, you, and Felina specifically. So very nice. And uh, what we hope uh, everyone else thinks is very nice is our website at aboutbeverages.com where you can find the tasting notes uh, for this wonderful blended scotch whiskey and uh, along with where it hits on our recommendation scale. And uh, while you're there, take a look at uh, all the other scotches that we were just kind of making reference to along with some bourbons and uh, even beer. I mean, all these things. Apparently, it's things with uh, S's and B's and B's, scotches, <laughs> bourbons, and beers. But we do do one. We haven't had a wine. When's the last time we had a wine, Keith, on a podcast, on a show? We'd when's the last time we had a have to probably go back a couple of years, I think. Gosh, what is wrong with us? I don't know. I love wine. I have wine throughout the week. You, you know, we huh? have all these things. What's going on with us? I don't know. We're We're beer focused. We are. We're going to fix that, though. We've, we have we've beer got a, goggles. <laughs> we oh, wait. Right no, now. that's not how that term <laughs> is used. That's something else. Yes. That's something else entirely. But you know, no, you bring up a good point. Maybe it is time for us to whine a little bit. We need to fix that. You're whining already. <laughs> with a, Wine with an H. You're <laughs> whining, <laughs> and then I'm we need whining. to whine. So, Where? Yes. It's been a while. We probably should. We should that. definitely have so. And actually, so since we're throwing that out there, yeah. you know how slow we are at getting the things. Let us know what is a wine like. I don't know what should we. We were talking about calves. Should we ask for a cab? Something like that. Let's see. Whatever. We'll, we'll be getting. We're into, open. We'll be getting a springtime. Maybe should we ask for a white? Maybe a chardonnay. Just anything. Just yeah. us, it doesn't even have to be a full podcast. Just give us some wine suggestions. We're looking for some new stuff to try. Uh, flip back through the archives at aboutbeverages.com. See what we've had. You know, maybe see kind of where our palates are. What might excite us in some way, and we'd like to do that. Or let us know what excites you, as in the beverage world. <laughs> In general. In general. In general. <laughs> Yay, beverages. Yay. That's the excitement of That's right. But whether we like it or not, you should give it a shot. <laughs>